Good afternoon, uh, praise God. My name is Ed Fasai with Sintongo. And um, yesterday I missed because I wasn't feeling well. Uh, but uh, I'm back today and uh, we're going to continue our series uh, from the last time we spoke. I believe we uh, were going to continue in the book of chapter uh, John, the book of John, uh, chapter uh, 16. We read uh, a little bit in John uh, chapter uh, 13, 1 to 17, and touched a little bit in John 14. Uh, but today we're going <clears> to <throat> skip over. Uh, to John chapter 16. We know that John 15 talks about Jesus Christ being divine. As a matter of fact, I think we talked about it briefly in the last, uh, <clears throat> in the last series. And, and because he's divine and we are the branches, we are to anchor in him and he in us in order for us to be able to grow the fruit. And the fruit that I was talking about were a fruit that comes as a result of walking with the Holy Spirit. Now, there are so many demonic forces of darkness out there that are fighting even as I speak right now. But if you stand firm on the word of the Lord and proclaim and know that you are a believer, and because you believe and, 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 and believe in Jesus Christ, you're a child of God in the kingdom of God, and that because he lives, you live also, then you are going to overcome. Praise God. But the mistake that we believers make is sometimes you fear in the face of adversity, in the face of evil, in the face of the demonic forces of darkness that are pretty much everywhere. Uh, because remember, as we said last time, a Satan was cast out like lightning from heaven and so, together with a third of the fallen angels. And so they are all over the place in the principalities and powers in the heavenly places and they communicate on earth to stop us from being that which God has called us to be. But if you stand firm on the word of the Lord and proclaim Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life, our Savior, and I know we just celebrated Easter recently, but it is not a seasonal thing. It is a daily thing. You must carry your cross. If you are to follow Jesus Christ, he said, he who wants to follow me must be ready to carry their cross. And so this is my cross. My cross is to preach the gospel. My cross is to stand firm and tell, um, teach the truth and pastor. Uh, I've been called to be a pastor. And, and it is a tough calling. Because the enemy is going to be fighting me all the time. So many pastors out there are prophets of God, apostles of God, true apostles of God, true prophets of God. They are there uh, in, in these in this last days. Yes, they are still there. But the enemy is crashing, crashing them down. And he said there's a rise of, a, of a false apostles that teach false doctrines, that teach uh, dogmas and, and man-made uh, uh, doctrines that are based on their own understanding the word of god declares lean not on your own understanding and in all things submit to god submit your heart to god you and i we need to submit our hearts to god and reject every false doctrines every demonic uh, dogmas from the devil doctrines of devils paul talked uh, talked about them in uh, first thessalonians chapter i'm sorry first uh, timothy chapter uh, i believe it was chapter four verse one to five and second uh, timothy chapter uh, uh, three, he talked about some of the things that are happening in the last days as a result of the teaching of those false doctrines from demons. Uh, so we ought to watch out. We ought to stand firm on the word of the Lord. And no matter what kind of trials and tribulations you're facing, don't back down. Preach the gospel. Even if demons try to attack you, God is there to protect us. He will protect us. And I'm telling you, I've been facing a lot of demonic attacks in my finances and in all kinds of areas. But I continue to stand firm and proclaim the truth as the Spirit of the Lord has put it on my heart. Praise God. <clears throat> um, last time we talked about um, this CNN series on, every, rather not a series, uh, it's every, on every Sunday airing. Uh, and I shared with you who, who are on Facebook. Um, and, and I'm going to share today with the YouTube uh, uh, um, people that CNN has been trading this this idea that the Pope is the, the, the most powerful man that ever lived in history. But I'm here to tell you that the most powerful man that ever lived in history is Jesus Christ, the son of a living God who died for the forgiveness of our sins. He was a man. Actually, if CNN doesn't know it, if, he, if they missed that part of the scripture, Jesus Christ was the word of God that came from heaven, came down here on earth. The word that was there in the beginning of creation, the word that was with God, the word that was God, Jesus Christ himself that was sent forth to bring light in the world, came from heaven, dwelt among us, became flesh, 
That is what I want. I wanted to center on. Became flesh by the Spirit. Became flesh through a uh, uh, Mary, his mother. And as a result of that, then he is a human being. So the greatest man that ever lived history, having died on the cross and being crucified for the sake of our sins, and that blood that was paid as a price for the forgiveness of our sins to give us eternal life came from him. It was blood, actual blood. So in case sin and missed it, that was blood of a man, but the son of God at the same time. Praise God. So it was, it was both a human uh, 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 in human flesh, but also the son of God, which means that it was a spiritual being in a human body. Praise God. That makes him a man here on earth. Jesus Christ was a man, the greatest, the most powerful man that ever lived here on earth, not the Pope. Praise God. So I want to put that straight out right now without fear. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. And I know that angels are with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. And I'm pro proclaiming it with a straight face in the name of jesus whoever is listening that is the truth let nobody ever tell you that pope the pope who is the most powerful man that ever lived in history jesus christ the son of a living god who died on the cross for the sake of our sins that we may be forgiven was the greatest man is still the greatest man that most powerful man that ever lived in history praise god that can never change praise god now he rose from the dead and because he lives we live also. Whoever believes in him lives also. Praise God. We have life, eternal life through Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, because he is, he is the only way, the truth, and the life. Don't let anybody ever tell you that there is another pathway to God. Some of the things that even the Pope himself has been treading. Praise God. The only way, the truth, and the life is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Praise God. Without him, you do not have eternal salvation. We do not have eternal life. Only through Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 6. The only way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. Not the statue of Mary, not uh, Hinduism or Buddhism or any other of these other religions, Judaism even. Praise God. Because the, the, the Israelites rejected Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, as the Messiah. That is a fact. And Paul talked so fervently about that. Praise God. He taught against, uh, against, against the, the fact that they, they rejected Jesus Christ. Praise God. And he himself being a Jew, former law maker, a Pharisee, a scribe, praise God, had to get a Damascus experience in which in a vision he saw Jesus Christ himself and had to be transformed. That's why we read every word, every word that is preached in the Bible, almost uh, rather in the, in the um, uh, New Testament. Almost two-thirds of, of the New Testament are written by Paul, led by the Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, verse 1 to 2, what God declares, there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, because we no longer live according to the law, but according to the Spirit. We no longer live according to the curse of the law of sin and death. The law brought the curse of sin and death. But we live according to the law of the Spirit, which is by the grace of the Son of a living God. It was that by the grace, by the love of God, not because of what anybody did, not because of our own righteousness, but that we may have the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, the Word of God declares that when we come to Christ, we become new creations. All the things pass away. We become the righteousness of God through Christ. He who was without sin, the Lamb of God that was unblemished, took on our sin that we may all be forgiven, that we may be sinless. He who was rich, somewhere in the Bible it says, became poor that we may be rich. What kind of riches are we talking about? We're not talking about earthly riches. We're not talking about material wealth. We're talking about a gold that comes from heaven. That gold, according to Revelation 3, verse 18, he says, Seek gold from me that has been tested by fire, that you may be rich. White garments, that your nakedness may be covered. I self, that your eyes may see. Praise God. That is the word of God. And so that is what we receive. And so to me, to every believer, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is the most powerful man that ever lived in history. Praise God. And I'm going to rest my case on that. But those are the signs of the end times. And when you see people being glorified more than God, then start to worry. Start to worry. Well, not worry really because we're not supposed to be wor to worry as, as, as uh, men and women of God. But open your spiritual eyes and your ears. 
listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Praise God. Today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. I cherish the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. It is tough to walk with the Holy Spirit because sometimes He tells us things to do and we don't do them. And sometimes we grieve Him and He does not want to be grieved. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive. He wants us to follow what He wants us, what he wants us to do. Romans 8, 14, the word of God declares, for those that are led by the Holy Spirit are the children of God. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we have deliverance. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we have the power, the power that Jesus Christ promised to the disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said, you shall receive power from up above high. Power from on high. He sent his disciples to the upper room and told them, you shall, shall receive power from on high. That you may be able to preach the gospel in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the wall of the world. Praise God. It is that same power that enables us to preach what we preach. It is the same power that brings healing. It is the same power that brings miracle signs and wonders. So you must seek the power, not the miracle signs and wonders. Because if you're looking for miracle signs and wonders, without looking to the source of those miracle signs and wonders, then you know, you're going to miss out on the miracle signs and wonders. It is the power of God that brings deliverance, that brings wealth. It is the power of God that cleanses us, purifies us, regenerates us, kills the spirit of religion, breaks every demonic bondage, breaks everything that is not of God in us. Praise God. That he may purify us. Actually, it is the fire of the Holy Spirit that purifies us. Praise God. The fire from God. Holy Spirit is from God. He's a person. Praise God. A person. And that's when we become when we become born again. It is our spirit that is born again. How we, how are we born again? How do we recognize that we are born again? Because we are connected to the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit. So that now you recognize that you're a child of God and you cry out, "Abba, Father!" Praise God. That now you have a spirit of discernment to discern any demonic forces of darkness because you have a spiritual antenna that tells you that whatever is trying to attack you. This is it. The Holy Spirit is te teaching you and telling you. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, when you become born again, Jesus Christ, uh, um, our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit become a part of who you are. Praise God. You, it is not, you're not them, but they are, we are, we are together with them. We, 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 we're the three persons of, uh, of God. Praise God. In other words, we are one with God. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is our connecting uh, conduit, is, is who connects us to the father he's who reconciles us jesus christ reconciles us but that connection is through the spirit praise god and the spirit does not speak of any other than jesus christ the son of a living god so every time somebody is teaching you a false doctrine and telling you that okay there is another pathway to god or there's another little god here uh, even some may claim to be jesus christ when they're not jesus christ praise god you must watch out praise god you and I must watch out. Praise God. So today we are going to learn about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, um, but here's what I wanted to say. And before I go into it, Lord, uh, let, let me just uh, say a word of prayer so that uh, we welcome the Holy Spirit. I know he's already here. Praise God. But let us just welcome him um, in, in our hearts and, and, and let him do a work in us. He uses me, and I, I know that he's using me even as I speak right now. But I, I like to welcome him. Every time that I start a session, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I thank you for everything that you're doing for us. That even though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, you are Lord and self that comforts us. You were, my Lord, my God. Oh, shut up, You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. And by your Spirit, we have that power from on high. Lord, I thank you. The Holy Spirit of God shall prevail against the enemy. I thank you, Holy Spirit. And you're welcome in this place. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you take charge. I know you're already in church, Lord, but yet I welcome you officially, Lord, to speak to that woman, to speak to that man, to speak to that child, to speak to anybody in the airwaves at the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, to be healed. Anybody that has any sickness and disease, anything that is not of God, any false doctrines that have been taught over time, Lord, my God, let it be uprooted even as I speak in the name of Jesus. By your power, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by our own might or power, but by my spirit, your word says in Zechariah 4, 6, shall these mountains, any mountain, be grazed to the ground. Lord, you say, wish to... to, to uh, your servant in Zechariah, Lord, that, that shout, you shall shout, grace, grace to it, because it is by the grace of the Son of the living God 
that we have, that, 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 that the deliverance that we have. It is by the grace of the blood of Jesus Christ that we have deliverance. It is by the grace which has brought us through faith. Praise God that these mountains shall be graced to the ground. You say faith, even as small as a mustard seed, is able to move mountains. Yet even that small faith comes from you. How does it come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We heard the message, Lord, and now we preach it, Lord. It is by that grace that we heard the message. Some of us were drunkards. Some of us had issues. We still have issues. We are a work in progress, yet merciful God, loving God, King of kings, Lord of lords, up and omega. You are still with us, even in that fire, even when we have fallen, you hold us up. You pull us up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, for pulling that woman, that man up. And I know that you're going to do a mighty work in each and every one of us so that when you return, you find us blameless in mind, body, and spirit. You're coming back for a, a, a church that is unblemished, a church that is holy. You yourself are holy, and that's why you left your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you purify us, make us holy. You said in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are those who are pure heart, for they shall see God. Lord, I pray you purify us with your fire. In the name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen. God bless you abundantly. I know that was a long prayer, but yet I felt compelled to pray that prayer. And was it just coming out of me by the power of the Holy Spirit? And I thank God for that gift. It is a gift. It is nothing that I really worked for. It is nothing that I put in my effort in. But by the pure grace of God, of the Son of living God, I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I know that somebody's going to get the gift of the Holy Spirit today, even as I speak in the name of Jesus. That no matter what you're going through, it doesn't say that even though you have the Holy Spirit, you will not find persecution. You will not see tribulation. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that just as he was persecuted, he was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. The man, the Son of God was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. But he faced persecution like never before. Why would the Son of God, who could just command, let there be, let this happen, who was there in the beginning, face persecution? Because that is the world that we live in. Because that old serpent called the devil that was thrown from heaven, having sought to exalt himself to the throne of God, was thrown down here on earth. And the reason, the very reason why Jesus Christ died to redeem us, that we may have life, that we may overcome the enemy. Praise God. He said in Matthew 16, verse 19, Matthew 18, verse 18, when he overcame death. And I know we've just been celebrating Easter, but I said, as I said, it is not a seasonal thing. It's a daily thing. So Jesus Christ overcame death. He overcame death. When he died on the cross, it did not end there. He had to go down the abyss. He had to go down to, 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 uh, to, 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 to death. Praise God. In death, he died. He actually died. He suffered. Was crucified on the cross. He died. He went down to the herbs, struggled with Satan, preached to the saints. That's the word of God. Praise God. Did you know that he preached to the saints that were in the Old Testament? He preached to their souls that he was the reason, uh, he, he was the Messiah and saved them. These were men of righteousness, Abraham and, 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 and all the men of God, the David's I. Imagine all the people that did, they were working according to God. Yes, and yet they, were fought, they, they had fault, but I, these people were ready to repent. And so he preached to them and he saved them. He saved all the saints. He rose from the dead with them. Somebody may be asking, where are you getting all this, Pastor? It is very true, actually. It is very true. And we'll share scripture regarding that. Praise God. We'll share scripture regarding that. I don't have it on me right now, but we'll share that scripture at some point because that is not what I wanted to preach about today. Praise God. And so he overcame death. He got, that is where I wanted to go. He got the keys, the open heaven, which Satan had stolen. And we'll teach, that about, we'll teach about that at some point. At some point. Praise God. The keys that the devil had stolen through Adam and Eve's sin. The keys that opened the kingdom of heaven had been stolen from Adam and Eve. That's why the curse of, of death, the curse of poverty, the curse of death, the curse of sickness and disease came on the earth. Otherwise, before then, Adam and Eve were living in the glory of God. They could speak to God. They could, because they were created, and I'll, I'll speak to the creation um, uh, in a moment, but they were created in the image of God because we know that God is spirit. And because God is spirit, they, they, they could speak to God any, in the Garden of Eden, and, and, and they, they had a communion with God. They, they had a holiness, a presence of a holy uh, a glory of God was on the earth before Satan 
had to go and uh, 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 get Eve to sin, tempt Eve to sin, and later Adam, both of them falling and introducing the curse of death. We know what happened in the in the book of Genesis. For those of you who are really familiar with the story, praise God. The curse of death, the curse of, 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 of struggling on earth, and, and you have to struggle for food, you have to struggle for this. Previously, it was just, you could just get an animal and eat, you could just get a mango, orange, all the fruit that you see that we have to go in the market and have to first struggle to work in order to buy a mango. All those things were being picked up free, picked up free. And so when Jesus Christ died, he brought back those keys, those keys, those keys that opened uh, heaven, which the devil had stolen from Adam and Eve through the curse, through dis disobedience. Disobedience broke the curse. Praise God. That even today, when you disobey God, you bring curses upon your life. We bring curses, myself included, upon our lives. That's why we must obey and do what God has called us to do. Praise God. Obey the word of God. Obey the spirit of a living God. How were they communicating with God? Through the spirit of God. Through the spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God was living on the earth. Jesus Christ was on the earth as well. Even the Father in heaven was on the earth. Praise God. So that's how they were communicating. Because there was a, heaven and earth was connected. That's why Jesus Christ said, when we pray, let us pray that the will of the Lord be done here on earth, even as it is in heaven. It can be done. We can't have a good health. We can't have a, a, a wealth from heaven as long as we are willing to put God first. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Everything else shall be added unto you. Praise God. And that's what he's called us to do. That's what the Holy Spirit has called us to do. Praise God. That's what Jesus Christ died so hard, suffered so much that we should have that communion, that reconciliation. He's called the second Adam in the New Testament. So the second Adam, while the first Adam brought sin, the curse of sin and death, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, brought life. For all the firstborns, it was actually the first fruit, the firstborn. Praise God. And all that believe in him, we are among the firstborns. Praise God. And we are joint heirs with Christ, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything, Lord. Now we're going to talk about the spirit of a living God. Um, actually, I found my note here. I was looking for it. Okay, if you read Luke four six, let us first start with Luke four six, so that you understand where all this, where did all this come from? Why did Jesus have to die on the cross? What what happened? Praise God. Luke four verse six. What does it say? And this was a good pastor that was teaching this, so I didn't get it from anywhere. But God uses pastors and teachers and. As he's using me to, to, to even teach it, pastors like me. We, we, we all are a work in progress. Praise God. Led by the Holy Spirit, we learn these things. Praise God. This Bible, this whole Bible is inspired by God. Men and women of God that were inspired by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote this word, this, this word here. Praise God. And now it speaks to us. Now how you interpret it is another thing. Because the enemy himself can try to misinterpret the scripture. That's why you need the Holy Spirit of God to help you interpret the scripture. Praise God. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 6. What does he say? He says, And the devil, if you're there with me, say amen. And the devil said to him, Praise God. All this authority. Now, this is the devil speaking to Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Remember, in the 40 days and 40 nights prior to uh, his death, um, the devil tempted him in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And this is what the devil is telling Jesus Christ, the Son of living God himself. He says, And the devil said to him, All this authority. I will give you and their glory because now he knows he has that authority. That authority, how did it come to him? It came to him through Adam and Eve handing down that authority to him and handing down the keys, the keys that would have otherwise opened the, the, the kingdom of heaven for everybody that is on earth. They handed, it, they handed that power and authority to the devil. Can you imagine? Listen to what he's saying and he's so proud. And the devil said to him, all this authority I'll give you and their glory for well, this has been delivered to me. Listen to that. This has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I wish. So he was proud. Of course, Satan has always been proud. He sought to exalt himself up on the throne of God. And on earth, because that authority has been given to him, so he feels he has the authority. 
But I'm here to tell you that authority was taken back when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke 10, 19, the word of God declares that give, Jesus Christ gave us the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And so we have the power and authority on account of what Jesus Christ did on the cross to trample upon serpents and scorpions in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And listen actually to Matthew, uh, Luke 10, 19. I, I, that's what I quoted. But let's, let's look at Luke 9, 1. Praise God. The Holy Spirit just took me there for somebody who is struggling. And I, and I, I, wanna, I, want, I want us to... Um, to, to understand so say, he says in luke 9 chapter 1 rather luke chapter 9 verse 1 says then he called his 12 disciples together praise god and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases he sent them to preach the kingdom of god and to heal the sick and he said to them take nothing for the journey and i think we read this story before i don't know whether it's in this series but listen to to this the devil that thought that authority had been given to him. Jesus Christ, even before he died, power and authority, he recognized that the power and authority had already been given to him. And he gave power and authority to his disciples. Praise God. To go out and preach, first of all, to power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Praise God. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So that power and authority actually he gave them even before he died on the cross. Because he recognized he was a son of God. Once you recognize, praise God, who you are from. Because Jesus Christ recognized right away. Because he was a man that was moving in the spirit. The most powerful man that ever lived in history. Praise God. Hallelujah. But that power and authority actually was, uh, was, was completed. Completed. Praise God. It was completed. There was a completion of that power and authority when he died on the cross. Finally, he got all the keys praise god he himself was not bound because he had the power and authority he knew he had the power and authority over the enemy and he had the power to give that authority to others praise god but for us who are not the son these disciples are not the son of god they needed that authority from he who had the authority and that is jesus christ the son of living god hallelujah praise god i just got a revelation that just tells you that even as a man because some people may argue that oh because he was um uh, he, Jesus didn't have it really any, oh, he wasn't the most powerful man uh, because uh, he, that power only came after the death of Jesus, his death on the cross. No, here you see that he has the power and authority. <laughs> Praise God. That is so beautiful. He says, then he called his 12 disciples power and gave them power and authority. That is, this is history. This is history. But that history dates back to the time of Jesus when he was here on earth as a man. So if you think that the Pope is the most powerful man that ever lived in history, that is a lie, brother, sister. <laughs> Praise God. That is a lie. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Oh, shut up about Sakaya. Thank you, King of Kings. He says, he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority, which means he had the power. He was the most powerful who had power over demons. The Pope cannot even cast out a demon. I know they practice exercising, exercising and I don't know what about exorcism, whatever they call it in the Catholic Church. I used to be a Catholic, so I'm not speaking against uh, the people, but I'm telling you that the power be, comes from Christ. The power, the most powerful man that ever lived in history is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. There's no power in Catholicism. There's no power in religion. The power comes from the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. Look at Luke 10, 19. What does Luke 10, 19 say? Luke 10, 19 says, again, this is to the 70. These are the 70 people, not the 12. These are 70 disciples that he sent out. Okay? And, and you're going to see something that is very powerful in this scripture. What does it say? He said, behold, let's start with 17. Luke 10, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. This was after he had sent them to do what? He had sent them to, to cast out demons. He said, sent them out. Um, actually, if you start in Luke 10, the ch chapter Luke 10, uh, starting all the way from uh, verse 1, praise God. Um, he sends them out. He sends them out. Uh, where does he say? He sends them out. He said, After these things, let's start with what, verse 1. Says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself uh, was about to go. So he sent them ahead of time, the 70, the 70. Now, these are separate from the 12 that we just saw. 
This, these are that he gave power and authority. These are the 70. He also gave them power and authority. This is what he tells them. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So the laborers are few. He wants us to send out labor. That if we want, um, he wants to send out laborers, but the laborers are few. But that if we pray to him, this is what he was saying. If we pray to the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, that is Jesus Christ himself, praise God. He's the Lord of the harvest. If we pray to the Lord of the harvest, he's going to send out laborers. So if we pray, if my people that are called by my name pray, God is going to send out prophets of God, teachers of God, pastors like me. He's going to send out evangelists, apostles, men and women of God filled with the anointing to pray for others, to bring others out of bars, out of uh, pornography, to bring others out of uh, uh, places that they are not supposed to be. Praise God. You know those places that they may come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And so this is what he sent them out to do. So he sent them out way beforehand. Now, listen to what they say in 17. Go back to 17. When they came back, praise God, and this is a fascinating story. It says, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So yes, they were subject to them uh, in, in the name of Jesus. And you and I can cast out demons in the name of Jesus. But listen to what he says. Don't just rejoice because demons are subject to you. That is the power. Yes, a God-given power from heaven. Praise God. But what you should rejoice about is that you're born again, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. This is what he says in verse 19. He says, behold. No, wait, verse 18. I was missing a very critical scripture. Look, 10 verse 18. He says, and he said to them, this is what Jesus said to them. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Oh, shut up, Sakaya. Thank you, Lord. Jesus saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This is the Son of God saying, These are not my words. Praise God. So, in other words, the, 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 I think we shared in, in the last uh, uh, series about how the angels, uh, when Satan tried to exalt himself above God and try to, uh, to, to, to sit on his throne and because he was given uh, uh, the, the leadership of uh, worship of, of all the, people, the, the angels in heaven. Praise God. Proud. I think, I think we, 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 we talked about pride, the spirit of pride. Yes, I remember now. We talked about the spirit of pride and how God hates haughtiness. He hates pride. He hates anything to do with pride. And this spirit of pride is what causes men and women to, 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 to exalt themselves and think they own everything. And when all that God needs is humility. As a matter of fact, I think we are talking about the washing of the feet. Praise God. The washing of the feet of the disciples and the significance of it. So please look at the, for that series. It's somewhere uh, on, on our website. It's also on YouTube. And so Jesus Christ is saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Even as the angels fought, Angel Michael, and the two-thirds of angels that did not fall, threw out Satan and his, a third of his demonic angels. Now they are down here on earth and they are trying to torment people, but God has given us the power and authority to trample upon them. Praise God. So he says, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall bear any means hurt you. Praise God. But listen to what he says in verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That is the most important thing. Rejoice not that demons, people will cast out demons. People will flow in anointing. I can flow in the anointing and I'm flowing in the anointing right now. I feel it. Praise God. But the most important thing, brother, sister, and I'm telling you this with a straight face, is that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior so that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Yours and mine is written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. That is the only way that you can make it to heaven. That is what you should rejoice about. Praise God. So we do not rejoice that, oh, demons. Jesus said, and he meant it, that many shall come and say, Lord, 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 we cast out demons in, in your name. We, we did this in your name. We did this. Yes, you will do all that in his name, and it will come to pass. Yes, it doesn't mean that it, you're not flowing in the anointing. Yes, and there are some deceptive signs and wonders from the devil. Praise God. And those are there. But there are some genuine men and women of God that flow in the anointing, but miss out, can miss out on heaven. Praise God. I am not going to miss out in heaven. I am proclaiming it. Praise God. The most important, that's why I preach this so fervently. The most important thing is for you to understand whoever's listening to me at the sound of my voice is that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and life. Not religion, not the spirit of religion, not Catholicism, not Hinduism, not Buddhism, not anything, not witchcraft. 
but Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. He has said it himself. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. How can your name be written in heaven? First, by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And once you accept him, he there and then gives you the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. It is the reason that Jesus Christ sent um, uh, his son, rather sent uh, the, the, uh, the disciples to the upper room, so that people may receive that power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, on, a, on account of what Jesus Christ did, the Father sent the Holy Spirit to the uh, disciples to enable them to do the work that they, they, they need to do, to regenerate them. And we're going to talk about the importance of the purpose of the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? What is the purpose of the person of the Holy Spirit? Who we are not supposed to grieve? Who we are not supposed to, 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 um, to, to, um, to blaspheme? And, and the, the Pharisees blasphemed the name of the Lord. They, blas they, they, they blaspheme the name of the Lord. They, people continue to blaspheme the name of the Lord, even in this world. In the music, in, I used to listen to secular music and watch secular movies, and they'll be casting the name of Jesus Christ in the movies. They'll be casting the name of Jesus everywhere. They'll be doing all kinds of things. Blasphemy, blasphemy is, goes beyond just casting words. I, I, even in your heart, when you, you have evil thoughts, you hate. That is blasphemy. If you hate another, that is blasphemy. If you, you want to kill another, if you want to do sin so bad, that is blasphemy. You were created in the image of God. You and I were created in the image of God. Genesis 1.26 says that we are all created in the image of God, male and female. God created them in the image, in his image. What is the God of God's image? God, we learn, is spirit. He's not a flesh. So that's why we're called the temples of the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God dwells with us, connects with our spirit. When we become born, born again, I said earlier, it is the spirit that becomes born again and is connected to the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. That's how we know that we are children of God. Praise God. And that's how we are supposed to walk. The dominion, the spiritual dominion that de the devil stole from uh, uh, Satan was in the spirit. That Satan stole from Adam and Eve was in the spirit. Adam and Eve lost their dominion. In other words, they lost their keys to the kingdom of heaven, which was through the spirit by the lying, deceiving spirit, the devil, that also happened called the devil. So once he took them in the flesh, once he took them in the flesh, listen to this, brother, sister, whoever is listening to me. Once he took them in the flesh, in other words, keeping them worrying about food, about cars, about shoes, about little things, then he won them. You are not. You did. God tell you you should not eat from the fruit, uh, from this tree. He lied to you. So he tries to 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 to, to say that the truth are lies, and that's that's the, the work of the devil. The truth he says are lies. Then the lies he says are true. <laughs> so, so, so that is how the devil operates. He calls evil good and good evil. That's why genuine men and women of God who are anointed, they suffer under the hands of the devil. People call them liars. They call them possessed when they're actually the ones that are uh, bringing deliverance. When you go to a church where there's deliverance and people are being healed supernaturally and people are falling because demons are flying out of them, they say, no, that is a cult. That must be a sect. That must be some kind of weird cult. Weirds. They call them weird. But I'm here to tell you, brother, sister, that stand in the anointing, cast out demons, proclaim what you know to be the truth, that Jesus Christ is the Son of living God, whether they call you mad or whatever. Jesus Christ himself, they called him mad. They said that he was casting out demons by Bill Zebub. Yes, it is in the scripture. Bill Zebub, which is the head of demons. And he told them, how can uh, someone who is casting out demons, who is possessed with demons, cast out demons? A kingdom divided cannot stand against, his, 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 uh, against itself. Praise God. A, a kingdom divided cannot stand. Praise God. So in other words, he was demonstrating to them that he can't be possessed by demons and then cast out demons. You can't be possessed by demons and then cast out demons. You must be possessed by the spirit of a living God to cast out demons. In other words, the spirit of a living God tells you that that demon is a demon and you cast it out in the name of Jesus and it goes out. Praise God. But there are people um, who call uh, people like that who cast out demons and are praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. And they think praying in tongues is evil. Yes, there are some evil tongues out there. If you're cursing, that's an evil tongue. If, if you're using curse words coming out of your heart, it is evil. But tongues of the spirit of a living God, they are not evil. They are pure. They, they, they deliver. They bring deliverance. Praise God. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So these people returned, and he told they returned from um, uh, from um, casting out demons and, and and doing the work that God had, Jesus had told them to do. And this was when Jesus Christ was still on earth. I, I, I've emphasized because he was still a man, not yet died on the cross. So he's the most powerful man that ever lived, <laughs> that, that ever lived on earth. Not 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 the pop. <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there. Praise God, because that thing really it got on my uh, my my got into my my spirit. And I said, "What is going on in the world?" But that is the sign of the spirit of Antichrist. Praise God. So he says, "Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven." Other uh, versions say, "Your names are written in the Lamb's book of life." In the book of life. Praise God. I just passed by there. I just went in. Um, um, led by the Holy Spirit, and I'm led by the Holy Spirit, so I, I let the Holy Spirit lead me as He wants, and I'm sure somebody uh, needed to hear that. But let us go to Matthew 18, 18, and let us see how Jesus is returning the keys. Praise God. Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 19. Now, He's talking about the future. Listen to what He says, Matthew 16, 19. Okay? And he was speaking to Peter, the Peter, one of his disciples. He says, oh, uh, let's start from 18. Praise God. This is, let's start from 17, because Peter, um, uh, 16, let's start from 16. Simon Peter was asked, what do people, together with their, their, their disciples, what do people say I am? Jesus Christ was asking them, what do people say I am? Who I am? What do you think they are? They, they think I am. Because he wanted to know. He already knew, of course. He already knew because he could. He had the Spirit of God, so he could learn. Uh, he could tell what was going on in people's hearts. So he knew already, but he wanted it from Simon Peter. And he was coaching them and teaching them. So um, so listen to what he says. He, he says, let's start from 13, because I need, I need to get this straight uh, to somebody who's listening. He says, when Jesus came, Matthew 16, verse 13, if you're there, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and I had a chance to visit Caesarea Philippi in Israel when I was in Israel, uh, it's, uh, I'm telling you that place is a war, a war zone. You could tell there was some war zone in that place, during, even during Jesus' time. So he asked his disciples saying, and he wanted to know what people thought about him. Although he already knew, but he wanted it from their mouth. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? 14, he says, so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So this was in the uh, community of Israel, in, in, the, in, in, in the people of Israel. They, some of them thought it was Jeremiah, some thought this was Elijah, because they prophesied that the spirit of Elijah would once again come. And we later learned that the spirit of Elijah was on John the Baptist to, to, to prepare the way for the Lord, which he did. Praise God. But they were confused about Jesus. They didn't know who. They didn't even have any idea whether he was the Messiah. Some of them thought that he was one of the prophets. No wonder some of them teach that he was, yes, a prophet, but he wasn't really. Uh, um, some of them deny that he was the Messiah, even with the miraculous healings and the wonders and the power that was shown. Praise God. So 15, he says, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? His own disciples. He's asking people that are following him, that have seen the works that he has done, that have seen the miracles, the lepers healed, and all these other people healed. Praise God. Listen to what he says. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. <clears throat> this is Simon Peter. How was it revealed to him that he is the Christ and the Son of the living God? Listen to what Jesus said in 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Praise God. So Peter, even though he denied Jesus Christ much later, praise God. And, 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 and you know, of course, he had to turn back. And when Jesus arose from the dead, he asked him many times, Peter, do you love me? Go feed my lambs. So he, he repented and he, he came back. Praise God. Do good. And upon, listen to these words, upon G Peter was... Uh, um, uh, the, the church. It was the rock upon which Jesus Christ built the church. Built the church. Praise God. That goes to tell you that the church is not built on uh, pure people. The church is not built on uh, people that are that are oh, that, that, that are in their own self righteousness. It is built on you and I. People that are considered weak. People that are considered sinners. 
people that are considered uh, so so no matter what kind of sinner you were god will can change you transform you so that he may use you to bring others to christ praise god praise the son of the living god so listen to what jesus says here blessed are you simon bird jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven how did uh, peter get the revelation it was through the spirit because he was connected to the spirit of a living god the spirit of a living god spoke to peter revealed to him that jesus christ was the son of a living god praise god for those of you who say oh the spirit maybe came uh, much later after yes the indwelling of the spirit the the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit came after. But even then, during Jesus' time, Jesus moved in the Spirit. He moved in the Spirit. He was filled with the Spirit. So the Spirit was there, and he could communicate. God could communicate with his people. Anyhow, because he's the creator, he can communicate to you, to whoever he wants. So he revealed this to Peter. Praise God. Not because he had already been saved, but he was a follower of Jesus Christ, and he had already got the revelation that through the Father in heaven, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. I hope you understand this. That's how the Spirit works. There's the, 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 the infilling of the Spirit. There's the coming upon of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord can come upon somebody and you prophesy. There's also the infilling of the Spirit, whereby this, you, you, you become filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you are filled and filled and continue to be filled. We continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And that's how He regenerates us. I just gave up one of the purposes of the Spirit. That's how He cleanses us. That's how He purifies us. As He fills us up, I think if you remember uh, um, David, he said, uh, um, um, he, he prayed so much that God, Jesus, God would not take away His Spirit because He knew the Spirit was there and it's by the Spirit that He could manage as a king. It is by the Spirit, even when He had sinned, that He could be reconciled to God. Praise God. And He prayed so much. Don't take away your Spirit. I depend on your spirit, God. Renew my heart. It is the Holy Spirit that renews the heart, that regenerates us. As he fills us, he, re he renews us, he cleanses us, he purifies us. He, 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 he breaks bondages. Of course, back in the Old Testament, it, 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 there was no like proper infilling of the Holy Spirit, total infilling of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus Christ had not yet completed the task of dying for each and every one of us. So they were uh, they, under the law. It was incapable. Of happening but after the law after the death of Jesus Christ which said no to the law in other words the law uh, walking upon the law then coming under the law was done with and now we're under the law of the Spirit as Paul says in Romans 8 verse 2 we're no longer under the curse of love sin and death, but under the law of the Spirit Jesus Christ now made it possible for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit that now we can speak in tongues and do the work that we're supposed to do preach the gospel it teaches us his word deep down in tablets of our hearts praise god we are built of an imperishable seed the living word of god james uh, peter says in first peter 1 23 praise god praise the son of a living god so listen to what he says so peter was revealed uh, um, uh, it was revealed to peter by the father through the spirit that jesus christ was the son of a living god 18 he says and i also say to you that you are peter this is what he says that you are peter praise god and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against him. This is Jesus Christ telling Peter ahead of time. It's, it's not saying he's not saying that he, he, he has already built the church, but he will. It's in the future. What future? When Jesus Christ died, uh, was about to die, he says that he said that he was going to break the temple, the synagogue he was talking about, which was based on the law, and rebuild it in three days. When he rose from the dead three days later. That temple that he was speaking of was the temple of the spirit of the living God, which is you and I. That whoever believes in him, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, which we know now is the spirit of God. And that that temple, this temple here, the new temple, we are the temple. The temple is not longer just a building as it used to be in the law. It is you and I who, be, who are believers out of us and that because of the spirit that is connected to us through through the holy spirit that is connected to us through our own spirit recognizing that jesus christ is the son of the living god and that we're connected to the father reconciled to the father by his spirit praise god so i'm hoping that somebody is getting the message praise god so he says i, I will build my church that is the church he was building the gates of hades shall not prevail against this in other words death the second death 
which was brought as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve, for the wages of sin is death, as it was in Roman, written in Romans 3, verse 23, can no longer overcome you because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Because he lives, we live also. Praise God. Death cannot overcome us. Hades cannot overcome us. We read in Revelation chapter, I think it was Revelation chapter 6. Praise God. Was it? Revelation chapter 6. About that, uh, the, the, the four horses. Praise God. The four horses which uh, have the... Uh, uh, one of which has uh, the pale person sitting on the horse and, and being followed by death and Hades, if you recall clearly. Praise God. So it is that death and Hades that Jesus Christ died to redeem us from. Yes, it is, it is in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 6. Praise God. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7 up to, up to, um, up to, um, up to 8. Praise God. So he's saying, death and heads upon this church that will be, will be building, a church that is based on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. According to Romans 8, 14, those that are led by the Holy Spirit are the children of God. Death and Hades cannot overcome you. The second death cannot overcome you and I. Praise God. Because Jesus did it once and for all. The Lamb of God that was slain for the beginning of our, of our sins was crucified that we may have life. That death may no longer overcome us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know if somebody's getting the message. This is what Jesus Christ was speaking about. But listen to this in 19. Praise God. It doesn't stop there. It gets even better. 19 says, and I will give you. Remember the keys that uh, Satan was uh, stole from Adam and Eve? You remember the, 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 how he was tempting Jesus Christ and, and, and he told him that ah, I have the authority. They gave me the authority and the, and the glory and, and, and everything in the world. Now I can give you to whomever I want. Jesus Christ brought back those keys. He, would be, he was telling about the future. I will give you a future after the death. And he brought back those keys from hell. He brought, up, brought back those keys from hell. Where death and Hades resides, where Satan resides, where he had stolen those keys, God brought them back when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Praise God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God himself, got them personally. And he was given authority in heaven. He brought back the keys to us. Listen to what he says in 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. At the time, because the time was not yet right. Praise God. Brother and sister, Matthew 18, 18, he, com he continues to confirm that the same word that he confirmed about uh, building his church upon the rock, um, uh, upon the rock which was uh, Peter, which is you and I, basically, it's not just Peter, praise God, and that those keys he would be bringing back from from from, uh, from Satan, the keys that are up in heaven that have been stolen by Satan, he will be bringing back when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. He did that for us, and if you believe it, say a big amen. I believe it and I take it and I receive it in the name of Jesus. Matthew 18, 18 says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth um, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. That's how we have the power to bind Satan. Every strong man of the devil, I bind in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic spirit of religion, Catholicism, every spirit of Hinduism and Buddhism, witchcraft, poverty, debt. We bind right now in the name of Jesus. By that same power that God gave us back, that keys to bind and to loose. That whatsoever thing we loosen here on earth will be loosened in heaven. Whatsoever thing we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. We loosen the ministering angels. Ministering angels to fight on our behalf. To fight Satan and his demonic angels. Even as I speak in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you believe it, say a big amen. Holy Spirit is interesting. Because I wasn't supposed to preach there. But he took me there. Because obviously somebody needed to be delivered. Let us go to uh, the book of Acts. Actually, John 16. Let's go to John 16. I'm going to take a little bit of time because I feel like uh, I need to preach this so that you understand. And uh, we, we, we will continue actually tomorrow. Um, that's the sermon for tomorrow. But I wanted to, to let you know of the power that was in Jesus Christ, that it still is in Jesus Christ, praise God, and that he was continues to be, will, will always be, the most powerful man that ever lived in history. Not the Pope, praise God. Don't let anybody deceive you, brother, sister. Don't let anybody tell you that there is any other way other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, 
and that by the power of the Spirit of the living God, we are overcomers. Praise God. That is where the power comes from. Praise God. As a matter of fact, that's what I wanted to talk to speak to you about. Let us first talk, uh, uh, um, um, read something here. Praise God. John 16, John 16, John 16. Praise God. Praise the Son of a living God. Praise the Son of a living God. Let us read uh, John chapter 16, verse 5. It says, But now I go away. And this was after uh, Jesus had uh, um, was, was explaining that he was going to be leaving the earth. He was going to be ascending after the death and resurrection. He was going to be ascending to heaven. He's going to our way to the Father and to go to the Father to uh, get that authority because that authority comes from the Father. Praise God. And then come back. Praise God. But as he went away, he said he's not going to leave us as orphans. Whoever believes in him was not going to leave us as orphans, but was going to leave us a comforter, an advocate, a spirit of truth who would not point to himself, but would be pointing to Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. That's how you know the spirit of God. If it is pointing, if he is pointing, I'm, I hate to call the Holy Spirit, and he, that grieves the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. He is a person. Praise God. He would be he, who would comfort us, who would heal us, who would bring healing, deliverance, who would teach us about Christ, who would reveal to us the truth in the word. Praise God. That was the purpose. Who would keep us holy so that when God returns, when Jesus Christ returns, praise God, he finds us holy and purified. Praise God. Listen to what he says in verse 5. But now I go away, this is Jesus Christ say, saying, to him who sent me, and that was the Father, our Heavenly Father in heaven, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Because the disciples were sorrowful. They thought Jesus Christ was going to leave them. They thought he was going to be uh, the, 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 the one, the promised Messiah. And their, uh, their understanding of the Messiah, even though people even like Peter understood that he was the son of a living God, uh, was based on uh, earthly standards, natural uh, uh, natural understanding it was best in the not in the spiritual realm but in the in the natural realm okay even though some things were being revealed even as it continues to be revealed to some of us but sometimes the things of god you cannot really fully understand them you need the walk with the holy spirit on a daily basis to understand the whole purpose for which we are here on earth praise god and so they thought that he was here to bring peace in jerusalem because uh, they were going through a tumultuous time with the romans the romans were torturing them and Sort of like a reminiscence of, uh, of, uh, of uh, their struggle under Pharaoh. This one very different in a different setting. But they wanted somebody who would redeem them from oppression. Praise God. Redeem them from the, 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 the evil hand of the Romans. Praise God. Using them and torturing them and persecuting them. And so when he said he was going away, he was going to be leaving, they were sorrowful and sad. And this is what he's talking about in verse 6. He says, but, I, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, verse 7 says, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, and this is the purpose of the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So if he leaves, he will send him to us. Praise God. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That is what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts us of sin. He convicts us of righteousness. In other words, righteousness. So in other words, if you're doing something evil, the Holy Spirit will convict you. If you've done something that is not of God, the Holy Spirit will convict you. He does not condemn. There's a difference. Because condemnation is of the devil. When you see some spirit is condemning you, oh, you're up to no good. Oh, you're not going to be anything. Look at you. You are going to fail. You have failure. That is not the spirit of God. That is the devil himself. The word of God declares there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there is no need for you to be condemned. You no longer walk according to the curse of the law of sin and death, but under the law of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit convicts, wants you to do the right thing, wants you to get away from sin. He does not condemn you. Okay. But if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are condemned. Who's the condemner? That is Satan. Praise God. And everybody that doesn't believe, they're condemned. Praise God. Satan already is condemned. That's why he's condemning. He's the, called the accuser of the brethren. 
But the Holy Spirit convicts you. When you do something evil, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you feel it in the heart. And then you have to, you feel the urge to say, sorry, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for what I've said and done. I pray you cleanse me with the blood, of, the blood of Jesus. And that is it. That's the purpose for the blood of Jesus. Praise God. And God remembers that no more. Whether you're a murderer, whether you're a rapist, whether you did what, God remembers that no more. But you know who reminds you of that? That is the devil because he is the accuser of the brethren, the condemner. Praise God. But I wanted to uh, take you to um, the promise. Praise God. The promise of the Holy Spirit. I think it's somewhere in John chapter 14, if I am. Praise God. Where he says, I'll, I'll leave you a comfort, a counselor. But let us continue. Um, so he says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and, uh, or, or, and of righteousness. Praise God. And of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. So if you do not believe, um, you are convicted. Every time you sin, you, it's like you don't believe in God. Okay. So he will convict you of sin. Even when you are a believer. Every time you sin, every time you are disobedient, the spirit of God convicts you. Praise God. So that you re you're reconciled to God when you repent. Praise God. If you're willing to come to the marvelous light, God is faithful. You wash your sins away and you're reconciled with God. Praise God. So it's convincing of sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness. Because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the rule of this world is judged. The rule of this world which is Satan is already judged. Okay. So convict us of judgment. You tell us that there is going to be a judgment to come. In which those that do not accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior will be condemned. So accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you will not be condemned. You will be judged righteously. You will have eternal life through Christ. Praise God. That is what the scripture is saying. Praise God. So it's not judgment now really. It is, yes, judgment starts from the house of the Lord. The word of God says in 1 Peter 4.17. Why does it start from the house of the Lord? Because we have the knowledge of Christ. And once we have the knowledge of Christ, when you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Yes, you also start to be judged. You judge by the Holy Spirit himself, not by any human being, but by the Holy Spirit. He con convicts you that, hey, you ought to change your ways. You have to do this. You ought to do that. You ought to walk according to the word of God. You ought to do the right thing. And then you will not be judged. Praise God. Praise God. It reminds us of the truth. That's the purpose of the Spirit of the living God. 12 says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, praise God, he will guide you into all truths, which is what I said. He guides us into all truths, for he will not speak on his own authority. Listen to that. He does not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He himself has the authority, praise God, but the authority is one with Jesus, the Son of the living God, and the Heavenly Father. So he doesn't speak in his own authority. So every time you hear a spirit speaking in his own authority without speaking to Jesus Christ without pointing to Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, praise God, as having died on the cross and has, uh, having completed the work that he needed to complete, which brought the, 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 the authority that we now have, praise God, in the Spirit, then that's not the Spirit of God, praise God. If it speaks of its own authority, that's Satan himself. You heard him talk to, to Jesus the other time, I've been given the power and the authority and the glory. So it is a spirit of pride. You can tell it is a spirit of pride. But the power and authority comes from Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Father, one with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So he points to the truth. He guides us into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. Praise God. He will glorify Jesus Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So he cannot speak outside of the Father, outside of the Son. They are one. Praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. I hope somebody has been delivered. Praise God. I hope somebody has got the message. So the purpose then of the Holy Spirit, and I wrote some notes here. One is for regeneration. Regeneration meaning giving us... Uh, uh, purity, changing our hearts from inside out. The other day I think we shared uh, in one of the scripture uh, about uh, the bread of life and how the purpose of the bread of life being the, the breaking of the bread, opening the hearts, the, the purpose of the Lord's Supper was to open 
the revelation of who Christ is. Praise God. Every time you eat the bread, it's for the opening of your hearts. Praise God. The, the, the opening of your eyes to the revelation of Christ. So the bread itself is spiritual. It is not something physical. That's why Jesus Christ, Christ said, the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every mouth. Rather, every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. How the word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord is supposed to bring life. It is supposed to be spirit. That's why the word of God is called spirit. The sword of the spirit. I don't know if you're getting this the, 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 the revelation. So in other words, the Holy Spirit that speaks truth brings life into you. Because the, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Praise the Son of the living God. And so, so he regenerates us, purifies us, burns us. And what I wanted to say is that those men, as Jesus was speaking to them before he revealed himself to them through the breaking of the bread, I think they were disciples, Cleopas and uh, somebody else. Jesus Christ, as Jesus Christ was speaking, I think we shared in one of his uh, 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 scriptures, that the words of Jesus Christ were burning inside of him. And he said, isn't that why we are hearing the words of God burning inside of us as he was speaking? So they recognized that Jesus Christ was speaking to them. And the word was burning inside of him. Fire. The word of God is fire. Jeremiah 23, 29 proclaims that the word of God is like fire. Is in my word like fire. Is in my word like a hammer that crushes rocks and piece, unto pieces. So, a regeneration. Going back to the Holy Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. It burns everything that is not of God inside of you and purifies you, changes you. It speaks of the truth. And that truth, you can you have to contain, of course, but you cannot contain without the Holy Spirit. That's why people are offended, <laughs> praise God, by the truth. Some people are offended by the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Every time they hear the truth, it speaks to their ways. The Pharisees were always offended. The sacreds were always offended. But if you're a man of the truth and you love a lover of the truth, you won't be offended. You know that God wants me to do this. God wants me to be to walk right with him. Praise God. Empowers the purpose of the Holy is to empower. Acts 1 8 says that, uh, as we say to the disciples, God telling them to go to wait for the Holy Spirit, that they shall see power from up above, high, from heaven. And that power we saw on the day of Pentecost when we were filled with the Holy Spirit, tongues of fire. Again, it's fire. The Word of God is fire. The Holy Spirit is fire. They are one. Praise God. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were able to speak in tongues and, and proclaim the Word of God. And 3,000 were saved and miracles, signs and wonders as we see in the Acts of the Apostles. Our guide, we've already seen that he's going to be our guide in, in uh, uh, John 16 verse 13. Praise God. Guide us into all truths. Praise God. An intercessor in Romans 8 verse 26. He intercedes for us in our weaknesses. We don't even know what to pray for. But the Holy Spirit helps us in those weaknesses. Whereby he prays on our behalf in tongues. In, 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 in mumblings that we don't understand. Heavenly language. That you and I may not understand. But yet he's pleading for us. Advocating for us. Interceding for each and every one of us. Our families. Our children. Sometimes you don't even know. You may be praying in the tongues. And you're praying for somebody. The president or whoever. Or even the Pope. Your wife. Praise God. Praise the son of a living God. That is the purpose in Romans 8.26. To intercede on our behalf. A uniter. He unites. The Holy Spirit unites. When you are together in the uh, unity of the Holy Spirit. That's what we call it. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. You are under one spirit when they gathered together on in, uh, on acts chapter 2 they were of one accord it is the holy spirit of course jesus christ told them to gather together and the holy spirit led them to gather together to be obedient so that they would receive the holy spirit and the holy spirit united them think about the, the in uh, genesis there was uh, the, the tower of babel those people sought to exalt themselves above god and reach god to build a tower and they ended up being disorganized and speaking different languages and they couldn't understand one another but in the acts that is reversed in the book of acts it is reversed instead of being disorganized and disunited they became united under one spirit not even though they were speaking different languages they couldn't understand each other because it was from one spirit and the spirit of a living god praise god hallelujah praise the son of a living god hallelujah praise god praise the son of a living god and the holy spirit is a gift it comes from heaven. We've already learned. It is not. Um, it's freely given. Freely received. Praise God. Praise the Son of the living God. None of us have worked for the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus Christ. It's the work of Jesus Christ that he did on the cross that enabled us to get that, um, that gift. John 14, verse 16 to 18. Praise God. He's a comforter. Praise God. He comforts us. Even when we are mourning, he comforts us. 
He comforts us in times of sorrow, in times of, uh, uh, you know, persecution, to continue on, to soldier on. Praise God. He's a refiner. In Acts 2, we already talked about the fire, the tongues of fire. Refine those men and women of God that they were able to go, as Jesus promised Acts 1, 8, to preach the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the whole of the world. Today, we are hearing the message because of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, because of the gospels that these men and women of God, they were filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts, uh, uh, as we read in Acts chapter 2, they were able to write what we are reading right now. Praise God. And we continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit, even in our own gatherings. Praise God. Now may God bless you abundantly. I would have loved to continue on, but we are running out of time. Until we've gone a little bit over time, but I felt compelled to teach this so that you understand. Tomorrow we're going to learn a little bit more uh, from here, um, and then we'll continue on and touch another subject. Praise God. Another subject that we touched on briefly. And I asked you a question. Uh, for those of you who were in uh, Tuesday session, praise God, um, about um, John chapter 13, verse 1. I'm going to remind whoever uh, was there and whoever is not listening right now, that's okay. It says, um, in 13 verse 2, it says, no, it was, no. John 13 verse 1, I believe, yeah. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world, with the Father having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So I asked you a question, who are his own? Did he mean to, he loved everybody in the world? Because um, according to Scripture, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not uh, uh, perish but have eternal life. Praise God. So does he mean everybody or does he mean those that are willing to believe in him? Actually, I just gave away the answer, praise God. <laughs> but we're going to uh, explore that because it is very, a lot of people misinterpret scripture and they want to say, oh, God is uh, talking about everybody. If he loves a sinner. Yes, he loves a sinner, but he doesn't love the sin in us. He loves the sinner. He loves the homosexual, the lesbian in there, the, the, the lesbian is the, whatever, the lesbian. The, the, uh, the, the uh, transgender and everybody, whatever it is that you, you, you consider sin, and we consider sin, or he considers sin, because sometimes people choose sin selectively. They choose sudden sin and they say this is not a sin, but sin is sin. We call it as it is. Praise God. Whether it's in the heart, whether it is outside of the heart, performed, in other words, physically, it is sin. In the New Testament, it, you, 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 it is in the heart, in the heart. Because sin, out of the abundance of the heart, and not speak. If you have sin in your heart, then that is what will come out in the physical, praise God. So it starts from the heart. That's why Jesus died on the cross, so that our hearts may be delivered, praise God. So he, we want to know, what, who was he talking about? Is he talking about those people that are adamant and are not willing to accept him as their personal Lord and Savior and then continue to say that they are loved? Or is he talking about those people that get the message, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, Accept and repent, accept him as a personal Lord and Savior, repent of their sins, ask for forgiveness of their sins, and are accepted in the in the in the sheepfold of Christ. For those that are hear the voice of God, it says my sheep, hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. Is he talking about those? Or is he talking about anybody that this church sometimes uh, in the world, especially this, the the, the seeker friendly churches, want us to believe that oh. He loves the sinner, even a homosexual, even that, even though they want, they're not willing to recognize that homosexuality is a sin. He loves even the witch, even though they're not willing to recognize that witchcraft is a sin, adulterers and whatever. Praise God. So we want to explore that and uh, we will learn some more tomorrow. Now I'm going to take five minutes to pray and then we will end this session. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and I thank you for this teaching. And I pray for each and everybody that has listened to the sound of my voice by your spirit, Lord, that they are, they are healed, they are regenerated, they are empowered by the spirit of the living God, that you guide them into all truths, Lord, that you intercede on each and every one of our behalf. Oh, Shandra Babasakaya, you comfort us, refine us with your fire, Lord. The word uh, declares in Malachi 3, verse 3, that you sit like a refiner, my Lord, my God, like a refiner refines gold and silver, 
And as you refine those Levites, Lord, in the Old Testament, that they would come up with uh, your righteousness and, and give offerings, Malod Magad, according to your righteousness, in righteousness. Malod Magad, we seek the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Malod Magad, we find by the Holy Spirit fire in the name of Jesus. You've asked us to see gold has been tested by fire. Lord Magad, in Kony Word in Revelation 3 18, that we may be rich from you, nobody else, Lord. The gold that is from heaven, Lord my God. I pray for your supernatural healing, miracles, signs and wonders, deliverance from all evil, Lord. Eyes, blind eyes to see, the deaf ears to hear. Lord my God, I thank you for the supernatural healing deep down inside our bodies, our souls, our, our spirits, and our inner man, Lord. So that when you come in, according to Ephesians 3, my Lord, my God, verse 14, 21, we are filled with the love of God that transcends all knowledge. My Lord, my God, that we are purified in mind, body, and spirit. I can your word in First Thessalonians 5, 23. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice in the man of course. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need him on a daily basis to fight this battle. Lord, my God, man, lady, boo, shika, taraba, sakaya. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness principalities and powers in heavenly places that all suffering god the devil that continues to fight even on earth lord demonic forces of darkness yet they do not have power we just learned that we have the power and authority from you you gave us back the keys that open lord the kingdom of heaven lord my god who shunned the baba and you said we have the power to bind and to lose whatsoever thing we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven whatsoever thing we lose in here on earth will be loosened in heaven in the name of jesus i loosen ministering angels to each and every one at the sound of my voice in the name of jesus ministering angels from heaven to break every demonic bondage lord we bind every spirit of evil every strong man of a devil every spirit of poverty strong man of debt strong man of evil every strong man of perversion sexual immorality unrighteousness every form of unrighteousness and sin let it be broken off of our hearts for the word of god declares in romans 6 malobas 10 to 11, we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. In the name of Jesus, sin has no dominion over us because we are children of God. And if anybody has not yet come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit of God, I pray you touch each and every one of us. My Lord, my God, at the sound of my voice, let that person, that woman, that man be healed from any infirmity, sickness, and disease. I come against the spirit of death, for you give us the power and the keys my Lord, my God, the keys of heaven. We overcome Hades. We just learned, Lord. My Lord, my God. Every spirit of death and destruction, infirmity, sickness, and disease. We annihilate by the power of the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the power of the precious blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives until death. So be in your name, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us. Thank you, my Lord, my God, my Lord, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, my Lord, my Lord. That you're breaking chains. Chains and shackles are being broken even as I speak in the name of Jesus in the leadership across the world, Lord. Everywhere in Europe, Asia, Africa, my Lord. I thank you that you're breaking bondage in South America, North America, Australia, Antarctica, my Lord, in Canada. I thank you for the work that you're doing in, Ca in Canada, my Lord. My God, I thank you for the miracles, signs, and wonders that are happening. Even as I speak in the mighty name of Jesus, I, I prophesy over every dead born in the world in the name of Jesus in Israel. I decree and declare protection by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Even as I speak in the name of Jesus, the war that is going on between Israel and Hamas. Lord, my God, I pray that you break that spirit in the name of Jesus. We break it by the power of the blood of the Spirit of death that seeks to claim lives. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus prevail against the enemy. Even as I speak in the name of Jesus, we cover each and every one in the blood of Jesus. May the precious blood of the Lamb prevail against the enemy. Precious blood of a lamb, the lamb of God that was slain for the forgiveness of our sins. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. It gives us power. The blood of Jesus gives us deliverance, protection, and healing. Lord, my God, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for the purification of the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit for the deliverance. Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus, that every knee of the soul shall come to know Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Every knee shall bow down. It is proclaimed. It is written. Every knee, whether in heaven, on the earth, and underneath, shall proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Shall bow down. Every knee shall bow down. Even as I speak in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the time that you've given to us. 
And I pray all this in the name of Jesus. All those in the hospitals, in nursing homes, I pray that they are healed in prisons, that they are delivered, that they come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Everywhere, in every facet of life, in every institution, everywhere in government. Lord, I pray for the mighty move of the Holy Spirit and Acts 2, 17, outpowering of the Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, and everybody say it. Amen. May God bless you abundantly. And thank you for listening in. And I'm hoping that somebody has been delivered. May God bless you. We talk some more tomorrow and preach and teach and learn from one another. Pray with one another. That's how we overcome. God bless you abundantly.